There are more than 900,000 different species of insects currently living on this earth, and some of them get kind of wacky. I wanted to share with you a few of my favorite wacky insects and tell you a little bit about them. Our first insect is the tarantula hawk. As their name suggests, the tarantula hawk is a species of wasp. They get their name because they hunt tarantulas, and they are almost always successful. However, they don't immediately kill the spiders. The adults don't even eat tarantulas. Instead, they stab the spider with their incredibly painful stinger. They're one of the only two creatures to be ranked four on the Schmidt Pain Index, and inject them with a venom that permanently paralyzes the tarantula. It then drags the still-alive tarantula into a hole it has prepared, and lays a single egg inside the spider. Soon, the lucky kid will hatch from the egg and be greeted with a gourmet meal. It starts with eating the spider's equivalent of blood, before moving onto its flesh. It avoids the vital organs for as long as possible to keep the spider alive as it eats its way out. After a few weeks, the larva will become a full-grown wasp, and will go out into the world to continue this beautiful tradition. For our next wacky insect, let's go with something a little more peaceful. The agricultural revolution and its consequences may have been done by humans, but we are far from the first species to invent farming. Atini ants, also known as fungus-growing ants, have been doing it for millions of years. Instead of going out and gathering food directly, they gather leaves, seeds, grass, or corpses to feed the fungus they live with symbiotically. They run large-scale farming operations to grow and maintain the fungus, which is their primary source of food. The ants and the fungus appear to have both evolved over time to be both better farmers and crops. The ants even naturally produce antibiotics to counter bacteria that target the fungus. When a new queen leaves to start a new colony, she takes some fungus with her and starts as the only farmer growing the fungus by herself. She doesn't eat the fungus herself at this point, she gets her nutrients from her leftover wings and fat, as well as eating the vast majority of eggs she lays. Despite the queen's hard work and sacrifice, only a small percentage of new colonies survive to the three-month point and are able to form significant farming operations. A year or two back, there was a brief panic about killer wasps in America. This didn't turn out to much, but it started when a number of Asian giant hornets were found in Washington. These wasps are about two inches long and can kill a person of multiple inject venom simultaneously. They have even been reported to spray venom from their stingers into people's eyes. That wasn't the main concern regarding these wasps, though. The bigger issue was what they could do to other insects. They aggressively feed on most other small or medium-sized insects, but their effect on bees is most harmful. European and American bees have no way to meaningfully defend against these wasps. A single wasp can kill 40 bees every minute, and the bees can't hurt the wasps. Just a few giant wasps can easily kill an entire beehives with thousands of bees. European and American bees are just dead if they are found by a single Asian giant wasp scout. In the native country of Japan, though, the bees have developed a response. When a giant wasp is discovered, the bees actually allow it to enter the nest uncontested. Once the wasp is in the nest, they fully surround it with dozens of bees. Instead of trying to sting the wasp, they instead rapidly vibrate. This creates both heat and carbon dioxide, and there are enough bees to kill the wasp with the combination of CO2 and being cooked alive. The bees have a higher heat tolerance, so only a few die. 